graduated from DePaul in 2018 from the College of Communication and the College of Science and Health. I'm also one of the Young Alumni Committee's chapter leaders, and today we're going to talk about composting. talk about today is vermicomposting, which means worms are involved. So if you're scared of worms or you think they're gross, maybe don't watch the rest of this. So composting with worms involves feeding worms your food scraps, like from fruits and vegetables. We don't want to feed them any dairy or meat. But the benefits of feeding your worms fruits and vegetables includes keeping all that out of landfills, which will help reduce excess methane, which is a greenhouse gas that contributes to global warming not something we love. Um, composting also is really good for your soil. You can take your worm poop and put it around your plants and that'll help them grow nice and big and strong and put good nutrients back into the soil without having to use artificial fertilizers. It also helps reduce how much trash is going in your garbage, which is a win-win-win! So here we have a red wiggler worm. This is the kind that we're going to use for vermicomposting. You can buy them online or get them from a friend who vermicomposts. For example, I have split my bin before to give some worms to a friend so they could start their own bin. It's just like friendship bread, except better. Oh, So they're kind of wiggly, if you, as you can see, uh, hence the name. And sometimes they secrete a yellow garlic smelling substance to scare away predators. It's totally harmless, but if you touch your worms, you might see that happen. So some of the materials you're going to need to vermicompost include a Rubbermaid bin with a lid and it can be about any size. Mine's a little bit too small for the amount of worms that are in my bin currently so you can go bigger than this especially if you want to be feeding them more scraps but this is a good size to start. Um, you'll also want a drill or some sort of sharp pokey tool to put holes in your bin's lid for good airflow. And you'll also want some shredded up paper or newspaper, and you don't want to use anything glossy. And the paper is how you start your bin. It's kind of like their bedding, and they also eat it, and it helps provide some grit in their diet. And then you need the worms. So about a pound or so to start, I believe. And there's a lot of resources online for how to start a vermicomposting bin, so it kind of depends what, you're, what size you're doing for how many worms you need. But a pound is a good place to start. So you're going to want to drill some holes in your lid. My bin's a little too wet, so this doesn't seem to be enough for my bin, although they're still alive and functioning well. So you might want some bigger holes. Um, some people will glue non-wire mesh to behind their holes so no worms escape, but as long as you're taking good care of your worms, they will not escape. And then you can layer down some shredded up newspaper at the bottom, and then you put your worms on top, this is obviously a bin that's been around for a while. And then you can sprinkle some food in there and then cover it again with some dry newspaper. As you can see, I've got a very wet bin, which is not great. So all that liquid though, you can use. It's called compost tea and you can put it on your plants through a watering can and it's really good for them. Just as good as all this other compost. So as you can see, there's still some bits of food some eggshells, things like that. It takes them a little bit longer to break down things that are harder, such as stems and things like that, and seeds. But you wanna make sure you have a nice varied diet for your worms. My bin is too wet partially because I feed them mostly fruits and vegetables, which are more watery. So your bin will maintain itself for the most part, as long as you're doing your part to keep it in a good moisture level, not too dry, not too wet like mine is, and that you're feeding them enough. You'll know if you're feeding them too much if your bin smells bad. Um, and you're, this is too wet. I'm telling you right now, this is what too wet looks like. And too dry, that could also cause your worms to die. But in terms of population, your worms will control themselves in terms of population. Um, you will find some cocoons and some baby worms in your bin. You'll find um, that the worms might possibly eat each other. It's totally normal. Um, and it's how they maintain their population. It kind of just depends on what size bin they're in. All right, when it's time to harvest your compost, there are many ways you can go about it. Some people have multi-layer bins, so then you can just take the bottommost layer and then spread out your compost where you want it. 
Um, but if you have a bin, you can just kind of scoop it and put it where you want it. And there's, you can store it too. You want to make sure when you're storing it that it's not in, air, in an airtight container like friendship bread. You have to feed it and maintain it. But when you're harvesting your compost, you can just scoop some out. And if you're applying it outside, mine is too wet. You can pick out the worms, but you're not going to be able to get all of them. There's going to be some uneaten stuff in there. There's going to be some newspaper. There's going to be some cocoons. There's going to be some worms. But you want to apply it to be around the drip line of your plants. Here I've got some green bean seedlings. Normally um, your compost should be kind of more of this texture instead of a clay texture. But this is what we're working with today, folks. And I'm just going to apply it around the drip line or the circumference really of the plant here. You can also put it in the hole where you're planting your seeds to help them grow. And you can also take some of the soil out of any indoor house plants you have and put some compost in or mix it in if you're transplanting. So there's a lot of different ways you can use it. And if it's the winter and you have nowhere to use it or you want to give it to a friend, just store it in a non-airtight container. There's a lot of tutorials online that I can share with you with links below to help you out with storing your compost. So I keep my bin here in the garage. It doesn't get too crazy in terms of temperature variations. You wanna make sure your worms don't get too cold and that they don't get too hot. So for me, this is a good space. I've also kept them in my kitchen before. You can put them under the sink. You can put them on the counter. You can put them wherever you like. But this is where I keep my worms. And you want to make sure that you're not putting anything else on top of your bin so that they have that airflow to keep uh, the worms alive. And that's my dog barking. Oh, that's Honey. She does not like to be left alone. And that's it for composting for now. Uh, composting is a really great thing you can do for yourself and for the environment. And it's really easy to maintain. So I highly recommend that you vermicompost. It's fun for you and your whole family. And it's a great pet. A little bit quieter than this one, that's for sure.